Hey guys, welcome back to the Golang CSRF project series. So we are done with our register uh, and login routes and also the restricted routes. We're also done with our logout route. Actually logout, I was thinking that we'll have to do something more, but then I realized that we don't have to do much with logout. All we have to do is just nullify the token cookies and just redirect the person back to login. That is it, you have to do on logout. So we won't do anything fancy here. That's, I, I'll leave it at that, right? Uh, <clears throat> the default route for this entire thing, like in the sense you can have like a restricted route, login route and register route, but, but there's a default also, like if you want to hit any other route. So what you wanna do is you just wanna say, HTTP dot status. So there's a small inception kind of a thing going on here because there's at, at, the, at the big level with the routes, there's, there's a default, but also at every single case, like, like let's say the register, there are different use cases. There's also another default inside those. So there's like a small inception kind of a thing going on here. Uh, this type of structure might be new to you. Uh, it's quite possible, but it's also a very commonly used structure in the sense you handle routes using cases. So this is a very common pattern in Django, very common pattern in PHP, very common pattern in Ruby on Rails. And um, I'm not sure about JavaScript, I've not seen this in JavaScript projects, but with Golang also, when you'll find projects over the internet, you'll find this common pattern, uh, this pattern really, really commonly on the internet. So this is why I just want to show you that this is how also you can structure your routes. And uh, it's a very common way wherein you'll have these routes and you'll have uh, get, post and all these different uh, you know, methods there. And there's always a default method. And at the main level, there's a default uh, route also. Uh, I really like this structure, by the way, because it just uh, helps me to understand everything very well in just one big function that, you know, these are the routes, this is what's happening. Uh, many people don't like it. Now it's again, according to your preference, I've shown you so many different types of ways on how to write routes. You can always take that and put it here if you don't like this particular one. Or if you like this a lot, take this and put it into those other projects. Feel free to do whatever you want. <laughs> All right, so um, now we want to work on this delete user function, which is going to take a little bit of our time. So firstly, when somebody tries to hit the delete user function, what do you want to say is, or the delete user route I meant, you want to say is print ln, and you want to say deleting the user. And you want to grab the auth token from the cookie. So you'll get the auth cookie or the auth error once you do this. And we'll handle the error. So if auth error is equal to HTTP dot Header no cookie. So in your auth error, you might get different types of errors. The first type of error could be that the user doesn't even have a cookie. So we'll say log dot print in unauthorized attempt. You don't even have a cookie, so why are you trying to log out, right? That's what we'd say. And you'll nullify token cookies. And you'll redirect the user to login. So it's saying, why are you trying to delete the user and first you need to log in, so return. Else if there isn't, there's just any other type of auth error, you wanna say log.panic <clears throat> and you know, show the auth error. Again, the same process, nullify token. This is something that you'll have to do, I mean, um, just for your own safety and security. You always want to nullify the tokens. 
whether they're logged in or logged out or they have an account or cookies or not. And the text is, uh, the error that you'll send is 500 internal server errors. And you'll return from here. <clears throat> now what you want to do is you want to um, see at the end what's going to happen is you're going to delete that user with that particular ID. Right? Now to grab this UUID, we already have a function called grab UUID function. It's in our main myjwt file. Right, so whenever we're calling my JWT, like dot create tokens and all of creating tokens, we are referring to the myjwt.go file that we've created together. That's the package that we're referring to. Okay, so here also we already have the grab UUID function. And here you'll pass the auth cookie dot value. And what you'll get from this function is UUID or the error that's created while creating the, calling this UUID function. We will say if UUID error is not equal to nil log dot panic comma UUID error And you want to again <coughs> you want to again nullify tokens. So you'll say nullify token cookies. I'm writing this, but you can also copy and paste from the above line. You don't have to type it again. It's the same thing. And again we'll say uh, w comma http dot status text. 500 comma 500 and you'll return from here all right the main thing that's happening here is again like i said db dot delete user function so we have a db file we have a delete user function hanging around here somewhere right that's the one that we're calling, basically. And after this, again, you'll nullify the token cookies. And you will redirect the user to the register out. Now the user is deleted, so you don't want him to register. And that's that's about it. So um, so we have done um, the complete logic handler now. So we have these two big functions, right? The logic handler and the auth handler. And what I want to do, what I'm going to do now is I'm, I'll be taking like a 40 minute break, and I will uh, fix all those typos and small issues and errors here and there. And um, I'll also take additionally 20, 25 minutes more to create these templates quickly, the HTML templates. And I'll skip to the part where I've done all of that. So for you, it'll be just one second. For me, it'll be about uh, 7 to 75 minutes. And we'll come back and then um, and then I'll run the program with you. And then let's see uh, if uh, everything goes well. Uh, till the time, till the time, what you can do is you can uh, put your keys here. Just put your app.rsa in app.rsa.public key. So your private and public keys, create that using the RSA algorithm. Um, it's very easy to do that in Ubuntu. Uh, with whichever OS you you must be in, just find out how to create RSA keys. Let's create uh, a pair, private and public keys, and put them here. And the format should be app.rsa and app.rsa.pub. So let me show you. They need to look like this, app.rsa. And app.rsa.pub. This is what they need to look like. So create your private and public key, paste them here, and let's meet back 
in a minute time for you and in about 75 minutes time for me. Hey guys, so I'm done fixing up the entire project and I've also uploaded it on GitHub. Um, I'll leave the link to the GitHub project in the description, but feel free to follow me on GitHub so that whenever I post a new project, you'll get a notification and you can copy and paste and use it. Okay, so uh, we are here in our Golang CSR project directory and all we have to do is say go run name.go says it's listening on localhost 9000. So I'll create a new window here. And what we'll do is we'll go over to localhost 9000 and I'll say slash register. So when you're creating the logic handlers, you remember that we have a register route, we have a login route, right? And we have logout route. So let's register a new user. You'll say Akhil Sharma 100. Let's just say one actually. And password will also be the same. So we'll register it. And this is the message that we had shown as a CSRF secret. This is our CSRF secret. And this is our super secret area. And in the terminal, you can see, uh, you know, all that's, that's happening out here, right? So back here, you will say log out. And when you log out, you remember that we have said that once the user wants to log out, you want to redirect the user to the um, login page. So after log out, you come to the login page and here you have to say kill one and kill And you can see you can log in again if you want. You can delete that user and it'll send you back to the register page. So we have seen register, login, log out, delete user. Delete user sends you, redirects you to the register page and log out register, redirects you to the login page. So this is the simple um, HTML templates that I've created. Feel free to create fancy templates. Feel free to even add React.js to the front end if you want as a, uh, as a separate front end uh, library. So thanks a lot for watching and uh, feel free to fork this, feel free to copy it, clone it, whatever, the, the whole project. And do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll keep coming up with awesome content like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.